Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and this one is gonna be a sort of a vlog video. Uh, I have no idea how well this is gonna work um, but basically you see right here um, what's left over of my previous face change setup and I'm gonna continue using that of course like you can see it right over here. Um, that's the uh, minus 50 degrees uh, face change cooler that I got from Dan Gilmore and I will be using that again. Uh, the next card that I'm gonna be using it on is probably going to be my XFX uh, HD 7950, which um, is this one. So it's slightly modded, you can see it still has, and you can also hear people are building outside. Uh, I can't really do anything about the noise, they've been doing that for the entire week. So I guess we just have to deal with it. Um, but yeah, so you can see the, the card is Volt modded for core. Uh, it has some installation on it from when I was testing this one out on dry ice. Uh, and then the front has like heat sinks taped to the VRM because... yeah. And also it has an I2C header soldered to it, so... I can use DVC with this. Um, but I don't have any mods... Well, I can use DVC to change memory voltage on it, but not over 1.7 volts. But yeah, so I'm thinking of um, running this card next because I wanted to run something 28 nanometer. I was first thinking of like big Kepler, but um, I don't really have a card that's really ready for it. And I wanted to test out AMD Sub Zero as well, anyway, so I'm going straight for that. Um, but anyway. So yeah, I was using this test bench, like this uh, B85 motherboard with an i5 CPU, because the last time I went Sub-Zero with dry ice back then, um, I had a lot of condensation on my motherboard and my PC Express switches corroded. Um, I was able to get the corrosion off by just having the motherboard like bathed in vinegar like two or three times. Uh, it works again now. Doesn't change that. Z370, X370 era gigabyte boards are just very weird with their PCI Express slots sometimes, but it it, it mostly works. Um, so yeah, and because I wasn't really sure if I'm gonna have that issue again, I used this board first, because this this thing doesn't have any PCI Express switches to crowd, and if it dies anyway, it's not really that big of a deal, it's a, it's a backup board um, that I just kinda have and do nothing with. Um, so yeah, so today I'm gonna be disassembling this entire thing and I'm gonna put my test bench back, uh, back here, set it up. And um, yeah, that's basically the, the premise. So uh, I guess I'm gonna get the camera a bit closer to that thing and let's start putting the thing apart. So I have a bunch of toilet paper for condensation purposes. So you can see how I insulated the PCI Express slot here. Uh, that worked. Act that actually worked fine. Um, so I guess I'm gonna use that exact same insulation method again. Because last time I tried plastic dip and that didn't work. It still had condensation on that. Um, so yeah. One other thing that I also might not have shown is that I'm using this bracket now for the NVIDIA cards. Didn't have that on the first time I showed the setup running. Uh, I don't know how much it helped, but it didn't make it worse. So, yeah. I think I have some mount issues on my 580. And I can't really say what's causing them, it's just that from mount to mount the maximum frequency changes quite a lot. Uh, so that's like indicative of bad mount. Uh, yeah, okay. This fan is connected to this debug thing here. We have a one SATA drive. As you can see, that's just on a sled from... This is actually just one of the normal test bench SSDs. Just pull that out of the uh, case. And have another cable here.
Okay. Here's the entire thing. Oh, that's that left a nice <laughs> marking on it. Um, yeah. So this is an. Does it say the name? Yeah, it's a B. A B85M E45. Um, very low cost, very basic uh, fourth gen Intel motherboard. Has an i5 4690 on it, just one stick of 8 gig RAM. This heatsink is completely overkill, to be honest. <laughs> CPU never went over 40 degrees with it. Um, so, yeah. And then we had this, which uh, also came with the face change, just because it didn't have a case. Just put that motherboard on there, and yeah, like it had nice contact, as you can see by the uh, indent that it left. But the actual test bench just has a case. <sighs> okay, so next thing would be the power supplies. I ended up using two because the um, like this is just the test bench power supply as well. Um, because a uh, GTX 580 at high voltage sub zero probably pulls more than the um, 400 watt and that's like it that's not even it um, we have two 12 why is it not focusing we have two 12 volt rails so I don't know which one's which but we are potentially limited to 20 amps and that's not gonna cut it for a GTX 580 so I just got the second power supply Power the graphics card with that, and then the rest of the system with the 400 watt. And then this is the yeah, just the test power supply. All right, um, we have actually now we have two power cables. One of them I can just ignore. Power cable, display port, DVI, HDMI, keyboard, Ethernet. There's no mouse cable because I was swapping around my mice uh, a bunch because, yeah, things happened. Um, basically, my two G42s died. Um, these were ancient. Like, I still have, I, like, I still have both of them. Uh, I have this one. This is actually my first G42. This is ancient. I got this like 2013 or something. Um, so it's like seven or eight years old now. Um, this one, the uh, mouse button, when the middle mouse button, when you press it down, doesn't work anymore. And when you hold right click, it unholds it randomly. Uh, so kind of annoying for gaming, but for test bench use, it's still okay. And then I have my second G4, to which I bought like a year later. So also like 2014, 15. Uh, that one straight up doesn't work anymore with left click. Like you can't left mouse button anymore. So that one's completely useless now. Um, so yeah, the first G42 has test bench duty now. The second one is dead. And I bought a G542 to replace it for my daily. Which I'm still getting used to because it was like two days ago. <laughs> uh, all right, so. Let's move on to the test bench. That's I can't really film that really well. Um, but if you've seen my test bench before, you know that there's a bunch of water cooling stuff hanging off of it, which makes it really hard to move. So uh, I'm gonna now take a bit of time to try to move it here. Yeah, uh, I have like, well, I don't know how much actually, um, but probably more than three meters of water tubing in here, together with endless, endless cables. Uh, actually, where did I put that? 
There it is. So, because this big front radiator doesn't really fit that well, uh, I usually do this. Let's put that there and then put the radiator on it. Um, but right now I need to un unsketch all the tubing on the left here, because that's not gonna stay. And you know, cables seem to have fallen off. Yeah, so this is gonna be really annoying to do. Because you fix one thing and two more things break. That's like what it feels like to deal with this thing. Because these tubes are super stiff. They do not want to move. So trying to have the test bench look the way you want. It's really hard. Also the power supply is still not in it. Honestly, I think I'm gonna put in the power supply <laughs> without really caring about the camera. Uh, because that's just gonna be a pain. Like, I have... Yeah, currently I only have the 24-pin and then two 8-pin graphics card ones in here, so I'm missing all these SATA once I'm missing the CPU cable and the other split GPU cable. Now well, that has to go in. I'm just gonna tear the entire thing down. You know what? We're just going to take the entire thing apart. I'm more like I'm gonna take the motherboard out and redo the cabling. I'm not gonna tear apart the water cooling stuff because that is too annoying to rebuild. I'm not like I did that already. And it was very annoying. Uh, here's the GPU block. Just gonna put that there. And then, yeah, I'm just gonna take the motherboard out, I guess. Uh, so we can do proper cable management down there. SATA cable. Well, the CPU block has to go. That's out. That is out. That is out. Uh, front panel connectors and fan hub is also out. So the thing, the nice thing about this case is I don't need to unscrew the motherboard itself. Uh, if I find my yellow screw, that is, and uh, not sc screwdriver, uh, I can just unscrew, like, you can't really see it. Oh, you can kind of see it. There's a screw here, there's a screw here, and then there's two more on the other side. Uh, and then the entire motherboard tray just comes out. Which is really useful because that's four screws, and a lot easier to handle than uh, taking out, how many screws? Nine? Yeah, nine screws out of the motherboard. And then having just the motherboard, and still the metal plate in your way. How can I get in there? All this screws. There we go. And for the last one. Furthest away. Come on. Right, at least this one's coming up easy. There we go. So next, uh, we're gonna take out the CPU block. Which you can see is actually on the wrong way, because again the tubing is very stiff, and well, I don't really care where the freeze mod logo is.
The one problem with this block is it's very cheap. And so the like the block itself is fine. But because it was so cheap, the accessories it came with are very uh, bare bones. So the base plate on the other side of the board that these uh, four holding screws screw into is so thin and weak that usually when you unscrew the uh, block you also unscrew the holding screws from the back plate and uh, yeah that should come out then you can see how the plate is already Come on. Oh, there's a, there has to be a lot of thermal paste there. Yeah, and you can see all the screws like loose. Uh, no, that's actually not a lot of thermal paste. Hmm. Well, it's not a mess. Yeah, this and this screw, they had like a full turn in them. Problem is, I can't really tighten them with pliers down there, like at least that one. Um, these two are these two are good now. So now we can just do this. And out comes the motherboard. I just have to take care of these cables here. Okay. Uh... That is lay motherboard. And yeah, that's the plate I'm talking about on the back. So, yeah. This thing, a uh, hate, love-hate relationship. I had this motherboard in my daily for what, two, three years? Don't really know. Um, back when I bought it, I had no idea what makes a good motherboard. So I, by random chance, ended up with one that's kind of okay, but really bad, actually. <laughs> Um, so, this thing has a very, very bad VRM. It's okay for an 8700K, but a 9900K uh, would probably bring this closer to the edge than I'm comfortable with. And the memory topology on it is a T topology. And on Z370. So, Memory overclocking on this is actually so bad that I can't even max out the frequency on these CJ items. Because the board straight up doesn't post over 3700. Not even 3733. It just doesn't post. And I know these sticks at least do 3800 16 because I did that on my B550 Master. So, yeah. It's, it's not even the CJR holding me back, it's actually the motherboard. So I'm putting this now. Uh, I'm kind of running out of space on my desk, so I guess just on the floor. And now we have like a mess. So there's a radiator in here with two fans. Um, but I'm mostly caring about hooking up the power supply. Okay. Luckily for me, this thing is modular. Now oh, this would be a lot worse. It's still not gonna be great, but this could be worse. Also a good thing with this power supply is like small-ish. I mean I think it's standard ATX. But the um I have an RM750X from Corsair in my daily system. 
that one's like one or two centimeters longer than this and as you can see the drive cage is pretty close by and also the Corsair cables are less flexible than these um, I mean technically it's a gigabyte power supply but I think Seasonic is their OEM for the Aorus ones at least so you see this is an AP 750 GM there's also the GP 750 GM which you might know from Gamers Nexus because that one blows up um, and there's, then there's also the P750 GM, which might be the same thing, I'm not really sure. I think it is just the same. Which also blows up, I mean. Um, but this one's fine. Also, I'm not gonna bother with the other two screws while the camera's running, because that's just gonna be a pain. So... Uh, we have... The CPU cable... Oh man, I really don't have any light in there. Can I... Huh. Yeah, because those are six pins. So the eight... Oh my god, they are down there. <laughs> There's one more eight pin over here. Yeah, but I'm gonna plug the other one in first. Oh, am I gonna get there? I really have to feel. Oh, I felt right. That was fast. Yeah, then the other split 8 pin cable for maybe SLI can go up here. And then, please, please don't say I have more than three 6 pin cables in here. There's one. Here's two. Is that it? I think that's it, actually. Good. Uh, I'm gonna connect the pump now. Because you don't want to be running without a pump. Uh, Actually, I want to put the side panel on this side. And then I'm putting that nah. through that small hole there. Okay. Pump is connected. And. We can put the side panel on here. And I know I've had some paste all over it. Great. There we go. Gonna screw that in later. Um, so now. So the 24 pin just goes up here. That's USB, that's SATA. Can I pull these cables away? Oh, I just realized I have to remove the side panel again because I need to screw in the motherboard plate. Well, I, I, I think I'm just gonna leave a lot of the screw put in work until after the recording because that's not really important. Like, it will probably work without any of the screws, because <laughs> it's laying on the side. Um, so it's actually more of a matter of me not wanting to have screws laying around everywhere, R other than, uh, like, rather than wanting to have all the screws in the test bench, I just don't want them to be anywhere else. So that's the split 8 pin, which I usually don't use, so it's just gonna live back here. Oh, those are the normal, uh, so that this is the CPU cable, actually. Yeah, that's the CPU cable, so that one also goes back here. Yeah, come out. Come out. Where are you stuck? Oh, the 
so it's stuck. Okay, and then those are the eight pins that are just going to go over here. So that goes here as well. So there's the... Actually, I think I could route the 24 pin through here as well. Some better cable management. Okay. And the motherboard's already back in. Isn't that great? So 24 pin, CPU EPS, uh, USB, even though I, I do I actually use the front ports, not really, not right now. It always depends on how I arrange my room. I often rearrange my room because it's, uh, it's one of those rooms that are exactly two centimeters too short to do anything you want. So, a lot of the time I have a setup in my room that I don't like for one reason or another and then I end up changing it up because maybe there is some secret to having a good layout in this. Um, so I end up changing my arrangement a lot. And right now I have the test bench very easily accessible. Um, so I can access the back. USB ports actually easier than the front ones, which usually isn't true. Um, where did I put the right here? Put the SSD slide back in. Good. Um, yeah, so now it's just the part where we put the block back on. I'm gonna make a new application on the CPU. Not that I really need it, but just for the sake of it, of having it not be super jank. Alright. Thermal paste is GD901 if you're asking, and I'm gonna use that same stuff again because, I mean, I have tested GD901 with the face change already. It's fine. It doesn't have any issues. And just generally, I've been told that, like, at minus 50, you shouldn't be expecting to run into thermal paste problems anyway. So I'm using a bit more than what you should probably use. Uh, I don't need an applicator as a CPU, it's fine. On a graphics card I would have you use an applicator, because that actually matters. Okay, tubes did shift a bit. Okay. Yeah, so GD901, I got, I don't know, I, I got eight tubes, eight pretty big tubes, like eight of the tubes you just saw. I've used up two of them by now, and I have that stuff for like half a year now. So considering it has like a two-year shelf life, I might actually not be. <laughs> um... Well, actually, I'm going to be using up exactly all of it by the time it runs out. Um, so yeah, so I got the entire thing for like 27 euros, like all of the eight tubes. 
which is like half as much as you pay for one of those tubes with MX-5. So it's really, really cheap. Um, and I just really, really like it for any sort of testing. Um, but now, where I know that it even on phase change is okay, uh, I think I'm just gonna be using that for everything because it's. There might be a one degree difference to like Cryonaut or something, but for the price, um, that's just really good. Like, if I try to do world records or anything, I might still use MX5, but for the temperatures that I'm using, uh, this should be completely fine. Okay, the block is. That's on. That doesn't go anywhere. Uh, tubes seem okay. None of them are kinking. All right. So now here, down here, you can see the said PCI Express switches which corroded, and you can also see that this motherboard has like like a has a RGB on the PCI Express lot we watched, which, which was like a short-lived thing for Gigabyte. Um, there was this RGB on the RAM slots. Um, so this piece of espresso is a bit bigger than standard. So insulating this is kind of hard. Like you can't, you can't just wedge a piece of paper between this and the capacitor like you can on the uh, other board. So this is a bit harder to insulate. But I will still try the same thing. Honestly. Uh, also you can see how this is still rusting. <laughs> There's still a bit of rust on that thing. I can't go closer than this. Like, because this entire area had plastidip on it, but when I pulled the plastidip off, all I found was corrosion. Like, literal, like, green, brown corrosion stuff. Really nasty, so I'm happy that this works. Um, you can also see the M.2 screw holes, like, look pretty bad. Because those also have rust on them. Um, so yeah. <laughs> That's why I was a bit weary of, um using this main test bench right away. Okay, uh... I'm putting it here. I will do a test boot of the thing, just to verify that it works. Uh, don't know which graphics card we're gonna use. No, I'm just gonna grab something with the heatsink on it. Also... Ah, yeah. Um... Hmm. This this one this one tube. Oh, you can't see. This one tube is like really big and annoying, and I can't really put it anywhere right now. Can maybe try to pull it up like here, but it's stuck on something. Doesn't want to come out. That should be fine like this. Um, so, power, Ethernet. Oh, right, I didn't screw the motherboard in yet. I should probably do that. Just on this side, though. Theoretically, one screw should be enough to hold the motherboard in place because it just slides on the uh, on this metal beam here. Uh, also, keyboard. And not to forget, we have to put in these as well. Uh, where's the fan hub? There's a cable for that. That's not it. Oh, I think I've got yet. Yeah. Okay, now for the front panel connectors. 
Oh yeah, the bot has printed on it where you have to put which one. So the first one's power LED. LED or switch LED. So plus is always to this side, if I remember correctly. Hard drive LED. Power switch. And reset switch. Okay. That wasn't so hard, was it? Alright, uh, so now for a random graphics card. Yeah, why not? Why not use FCR's 560? That I'm gonna have to send out. He asked me to get like a code on the shipping a while ago, and I just kind of forgot about it. So I placed the stuff on my desk to not forget about it. Um, and I feel like getting things done today, so maybe I'll finally get around to finding a package to ship it in and telling him how expensive it's gonna be. Okay, graphics card is in, we have HDMI connected. This thing should run now if I don't forget anything. Uh, power on. Well, it runs. Pump is also running, that's good. Uh, yeah, yeah, and we have display out. I can't really show it because that's where the camera arm is. <laughs> um, I guess I can take the oh, camera out. So this is how I have the camera arm, just on a case, like a book, to give it extra rigidity and a power supply screwed into the bottom. But yeah, we, yeah as you can see, uh, we have this layout, and then yeah, this is still a mess. So. Uh, I guess. Oh. What just happened? Um. I guess we're finished. It's not much to do. Like, I'm gonna. Yeah. I guess I'm gonna clean the desk and then maybe put in the missing screws here. Um, but. Yeah, so. Oh right, one more thing I forgot is these two fans right here in the front are not running yet. Uh, where are those cables? Uh, here's one. I guess it goes there. That fan spinning? Yep. And the other one is right here. And that one goes into the CPU slot. I don't know which one it was, the gray or the black one. Oh, the, the black one says CPU optional, so the gray one is the CPU one. And are we spinning? Yep. Okay. Now we're finished. So, so I guess I can turn the flash off now. Uh, here we have my normal, usual test bench in all of its Coffee Lake glory, and its standard red RGB, or more like just R. Um, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Like this is this has to be the only motherboard equipped with RGB that doesn't default to rainbow puke. It just defaults to red, <laughs> which is it. Like, did Gigabyte ever make red stuff? I think orange was like their color. I don't know. There there could have been there could be some like the SOC boards were always orange. Then they had some green ones. Don't know if they ever made a red one. It's more like an Asus thing, and MSI, and just generally everyone else. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, test bench is working again, and um, yeah, so I'm gonna be using the face change cooler. Like uh, one one difficulty we're gonna have is because of this we're gonna have so. Usually I, I, I connected the cooler to the card first, then put it in the system, and now I'm gonna have to like put the entire thing through here. Which might actually not fit if I use like a super tall card. So I might actually have to like put the card into the slot and then put the cooler on it. Or like do it weirdly with the face change through here. Um But like the um so we take the face change arm here, so like it, 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 it can go in like this. That's not a problem, it's just like getting a card connected to it that uh, fits through this thing. Uh, so yeah. Or I might completely have to rethink this and then uh, not use a case at all. Put a put an, put this motherboard on the piece of foam again. <laughs> Maybe the same with the base metal plate, so it's a bit more rigid. Um, but yeah, for now it works. So this is my usual test bench setup. And uh, yeah, I mean, we are over 40 minutes, this is long enough. So I guess thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, just a, it's just a vlog. So that's what it is, I hope you enjoyed this. And until next time, goodbye.